Hi there. Thanks for watching this video series of reinforcement learning with TensorFlow agents. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In this video, we're going to talk about TF Agents Bandit Library. Bandit Library is designed to solve multi armed bandits tasks. In the multi armed bandits setting, in each round, the agent receives some information about the current state. Then it chooses an action based on this information and its experience gathered in previous rounds. At the end of each round, the agent receives the reward associated with the chosen action. An example for multi-armed bandits, as the name says, is the slot machines. Imagine we have a set of slot machines that offers different payouts. Our job is to find the one with the best payout before we lose too much money. The simple strategy of trying each slot machine once and then picking the one paid the most wouldn't work here, because the payouts are probabilistic. We need to try each slot machine many times to gather information before we settle on the best one. This is the main challenge with multi-armed bandits. The agent has to balance between exploiting prior knowledge and exploring to avoid overlooking the optimal actions. This is also known as exploration and exploitation dilemma. If you explore too much, you lose too much money unnecessarily. If you exploit too much, you may be choosing the suboptimal actions. You may be curious, why is the bandits library in TF agents? You can think of multi-armed bandits as a special case of reinforcement learning. Usually, there is a piece of side information associated with the arms in the bandits setting. We call this side information context which is the equivalent of state or observation in reinforcement learning. The actions and rewards are the same as in the reinforcement learning setting. The main difference between general reinforcement learning and multi-armed bandits is that in MAB, we assume that the actions taken by the agent does not influence the next state of the environment. Therefore, agents do not model state transitions credit rewards to pass the actions, or plan ahead to get to reward-rich states. Here's a practical MAB example. Suppose you have a website with four different kinds of designs. This could be different layouts, image assets, font sizes, and so on. You want to pick the one that keeps the visitors on your website as long as possible. The easiest thing to do is to set up an A-B test with these four designs for a while and pick the best one based on your observation at the end of the A-B test. In this case, we are exploring by trying out different options. After the exploration, we can exploit the best one. One thing to note is the regret, which is the difference between what you actually get and the optimal reward. So in this A-B test example, the regret does not improve in the exploration phase until you go into the exploitation phase. But if you are using a MAB algorithm to do exploration and exploitation at the same time, the regret gradually decreases because you are gathering more information about the rewards of the four options, which helps you pick the best one along the way. So this is a much more effective approach. Similar to reinforcement learning environments, if you want to solve your own multi-armed bandits problems, you need to create a custom bandits environment. In this case, you only need to define init, observe, and apply action functions. This subclassing is to make sure that the state transitions are not influenced by the actions. What's nice about the bandits library is that we even have pre-implemented environments you can use directly. Here, we are defining three arms with four dimensional contextual features between minus 10 and 10. The rewards are linear payoffs based on the context. We then use the built-in stationary stochastic pi environment to create the environment we want. This is easier than creating a subclass of bandits pi environment and define init, observe, and apply action functions. We also have a set of built-in agents such as linear UCB, linear Thompson sampling, and so on. They are well tested and ready to use. We are going to use the linear UCB agent here. The main idea 
of linear UCB is optimism in the face of uncertainty. The linear UCB agent incorporates exploration while boosting the estimates by an um, amount that corresponds to the variance of these estimates. It keeps track of running average rewards for all actions, along with confidence intervals around the estimates. In each run, the algorithm chooses the action that has the highest upper confidence bound on its reward estimate. In linear UCB, we have an expected payoff term with linear estimation, plus an upper confidence bound. This helps encourage the agent to explore more unexplored actions. You can read more about linear UCB in the original paper from Yahoo. We already mentioned regret in our A-B test example. Regret is a key metric in the MAB setting. Here, we are just setting up the regret metric with the optimal reward. Unlike our previous episodes in which we used reverb replay buffer, we are going to use bandit replay buffer this time. Next, we run the training loop using the dynamic step driver. This is very much similar to our previous reinforcement learning examples. You can see in the training graph, the average regret quickly decreases to around zero. This means we have found the optimal policy here. So to summarize, today we introduced the TF agents bandits library to you and walked you through a small example of solving a simple three-armed bandits problem with the bandits library. In our next episode, we are going to look at how to apply the bandits library to the movie lens recommendation setting. Stay tuned. 